Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. So, towards the end of the last video, I was talking about the Greenland Blocking Index. So, we know that the jet streams are slowing down and they're getting much wavier as the Arctic warms much faster than the lower latitudes. So this causes the jet streams to slow down and become much wavier. Um, so the ridges are much higher, extending much further north, and the troughs are, expand, are, are extending much further south. And when we get a ridge over Greenland that's persistent and stuck there, a blocking pattern, then we can get very, very high melt on Greenland. And also that generally we have lower sea ice those years. We're closer to setting record so so i was showing this plot in the previous video this is the daily greenland blocking index in 2012 versus the climatology so the black is is the average of what normally happens for this index and here you know we get so the the green curve the blocking index is much higher than than what we would expect the norm in 2012 but when you look at 2019 the red curve it's even higher, you know, it's, it, it's, the green curve touches the climatology in many places, but the red curve doesn't do that. The red curve is higher up. Uh, and so 2019, there was a lot more blocking. Um, and this was throughout the uh, winter as well. This is just showing May to September, but it was also higher during the winter. So there was much less snowfall. So we had a record melt of ice uh, from the Greenland ice sheet in 2019 and the second in second place is 2012. So when this blocking pattern establishes over Greenland, the melt is going to be huge. So watch out. These are the anomalies um, for, for uh, daily anomalies, accounts, okay, number of days when there's anomalies and you can see, uh, you know, a, a trend uh, upward here, very, very, 2019 especially. Okay, um, so here's a pattern. This is what a blocking pattern is. So this is, um, this shows, uh, this is 30th of July to, to August 4th, 2019. And this is the mean sea level pressure. And I showed you uh, here, this is mean sea level pressure. Okay, so very, very, this is a very strong ridge where, you know, the, the, the jet streams would come up here and go down here. This would be the trough. This would be the ridge. Very strong ridge over Greenland. Very clear skies. The sun's beating down. You know, very record melt. The air, the air pressure is high here, low outside. So the air goes from high to low, deflects to the right because of the Coriolis. So the circulation around Greenland will be in this direction. See the arrows. So the warm, relatively warm air comes up the coast here, lots of melt on this, on the west side, and comes back around this way. Okay, um, and if you look at the uh, curves of, this is the mass balance in gigatons per year for the, uh, as a function of the, the temperature. Okay, and this is the surface mass balance and the discharge, ice discharge, but also melting from below. So as temperature goes up, you get, uh, you know, more and more ice is lost from Greenland. There's more and more surface melt from Greenland. There's more and more discharge from Greenland. So this is loss of ice from calving and melting from the ocean, warm ocean temperatures. Okay, um, and uh, this is the surface mass balance uh, and what we would expect going into the future, although, you know, I always compress the horizontal scale because things are always happening faster than expected. Okay, so that's a key paper. Now, this came out uh, even more recently. Well, this was August 20th. Greenland ice sheet lost a record 1 million tons of ice per minute in 2019. Okay, uh, you know, the ice sheet shrank by 532 billion tons last year as its surface melted and glaciers fell into the ocean and would have filled seven Olympic-sized swimming pools per second, okay, or 1 million uh, tons of ice per minute. Okay, um, 
So here is, uh, you know, 532 billion tons of ice lost from Greenland, and here's a plot. So this is ice mass change in tons uh, by the model and by the satellite, okay? Uh, this is, well, this is previous data and model, and this is the satellite. So, you know, look at this huge ice loss in 2010, again in 2012, very low sea ice those years, you're blocking high over Greenland. Then, it, then um, there was uh, troughs sitting over Greenland for a while, and that was dr relatively colder years, so the ice loss was only more like 100 gigatons, only 100 gigatons. And then look what happened in 2019, a block sitting over Greenland and a record loss, 532 gigatons of ice lost. Now, all of Greenland is, is, is about, it says six, but it's, it's seven meters, should be seven meters of sea level rise. The extreme ice loss in 2019 is attributed to blocking patterns of weather that kept warm air over Greenland for longer periods. These are becoming increasingly frequent as the world heats up, right? As the jet streams slow down and become wavier, and you get these blocking patterns. This causes our extreme weather events at lower latitudes. Almost 96% of the ice sheet underwent melting at some point in 2019, compared to an average of 64% between 1981 and 2010. So, you know, it was shocking. Um, it's the most ice, uh, you know, it's, it's the highest ice loss in centuries, maybe even, you know, millennia. 2019 broke the previous record of 2012 by 15%, itself an unmatched record over the past centuries to millennia. Okay, so it's using the GRACE satellites, uh, you know, the new GRACE satellite, 2017 and 2018 had unusually low ice loss because of the reversal of the blocking pattern that resulted in cold, snowy conditions fixed over Greenland. So it's not just the patterns in the summer, it's the patterns in the winter. You know, and of course, as Greenland melts, melt the meltwater is fresh water, so it dilutes the salt content of the surrounding ocean, and that contributes to slowing the jet stream, the Gulf Stream, the ocean currents. If we wanted to make the 500 billion tons of fresh water added in 2019 as salty as the ocean water, we would need 200,000 Panamax class cargo ships full of salt. Would to and dump that salt into the Atlantic, and that would bring the ocean salinity to the normal value. So this freshwater hosing, if you like, has huge effects and can actually slow down and perhaps even shut off the ocean current system. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Uh, this is another. So of course, sea level rises rapidly. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's uh, sea level rises rapidly. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll talk about, I've talked about most of these things here, changing weather patterns, um, Greenland ice sheet retreat. I've talked about most of these things in this article, but I'm gonna talk about the actual paper here. This is a very, very good paper, very important paper. Return, all these papers are available. Um, if you just Google the title, you can look up the paper yourself. They're open source. Okay, so between 2003 and 2016, the Greenland Ice Sheet was one of the largest contributors to sea level rise. It lost about 255 gigatons of ice per year. The mass loss slowed in 2017 and 2018 to about 100 gigatons per year. This is because of the, the uh, trough over Greenland those years. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the GRACE satellite was replaced with the GRACE follow-on satellite, GRACE-FO satellite. And they found that the ice loss in 2019, the mass loss in one month alone in July was 223 gigatons, almost what the yearly number average is. Okay, since, since uh, between, so, Compare it to this number, 2003 to 2016, 255 gigatons of ice loss per year on average. July of 2019, we lost almost that amount. The, the annual that in 2019 was 532 gigatons of ice loss. So let's just look at the figures because these are excellent figures here. So this is the ice mass change. Um, 
Okay. So this is the Greenland. Uh, this is the Greenland ice loss mass. So it's it's coming here. It's accelerating. There's big drops in years when there's very low sea ice, and then a f slowing down here, and then boom, we have this huge drop right here. Okay. So this is this data gap here is because of the you know when Grace stopped operating, the Grace FO was launched. It took a while to get it up and running. And that's a little gap here, but in 2019, we had a record drop. Okay, um, this is showing you the anomalies. Um, and uh, so big drop of ice in 2010 and 2012, not so much in 2018. So we had a, a blocking high over Greenland. We had a low, a low, pad, low pressure pattern over Greenland you know, uh, a trough, so not so much melt that year. And then 2019 isn't shown, um, right? But it's talked about up here, it's shown here. And uh, this is a typical year. So the ice grows a bit in the winter and, you know, it starts to melt out uh, May, June, July. July is the uh, most, is the month of the greatest melt and then it, as the as the season changes the melt rate decreases so here's uh you know in 2017 2018 with the with the trough over greenland it was colder than normal and then in 2019 there was a you know it's much warmer than than normal okay this is the temperature and all this is the um the pressure uh halfway up the atmosphere 500 hexapascals and uh, so cooler than normal in 2017 and 2018, warmer than normal in this whole region in 2019, and enough around enough warmth around the edges to get you know record melting. And this is a very interesting plot here. You can see uh, this is the accumulation versus uh, okay. This is accumulation from snow. You know the the mass balance, surface mass balance. Okay, uh, from precipitation. And this is runoff and discharge. This is the null point here. Any point here is mass gain, mass loss, to the year. In 2019, we're here. So we had very, very low accumulation and we had very, very large melt. So we set a record year. And he, these are the sort of numbers, the, the different circle sizes are, are the numbers. So very, very interesting plot. And then um, we have this paper, Earth has lost 28 trillion tons of ice in less than 30 years. So it looks at all of the different sources of ice loss. And I'll just look at the paper. Okay, so Earth lost 28 trillion tons of ice between 1994 and 2017. Arctic sea ice was 7.6, Antarctic ice shells next at 6.5, mountain glaciers 6.2, Greenland ice sheet 3.8, Antarctic ice sheet 2.5 trillion tons, and Southern Ocean sea ice 0.9. Okay, 60% of the ice loss is from the Northern Hemisphere, 40% from the Southern, don't forget that. The rate of ice loss increased by 57% since the 1990s, from 0.8 to 1.2 trillion tons per year, and that ice loss caused global sea level rise of 35 millimeters. Now I'm just going to go to the figures and then finish off here. So, you know, here's the charts of the, you know, what happened in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and over the whole range, over the whole range, you know, we went from a loss of about 800 to over 1200, a 57% rise in the loss. This is the thickness change of the ice. So even this is Antarctica, many parts are thinning. Um, and this is in the Arctic, so there's Greenland thinning and the Canadian Archipelago and the sea ice loss. It's all shown here on this plot. This is the glaciers around the planet showing the different uh, charts for all the different glaciers and the size, you know, huge ice loss from glaciers in Alaska, for example. Um, this is the Antarctica Peninsula, the loss in the calving of the Larsen ice shells and here we have the sea level rise. We have the Antarctic sea ice increasing and then decreasing, and Arctic sea uh, and Antarctic Arctic sea ice ice 
shelf calving, ice shelf thinning, and all the different components in sea level rise. So thanks for listening.